What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chig coming at you with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today, in excitement for the Andarials changes, I'm going to be going over the Heartseeker Rogue. Super excited about it. This build is a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to trying it with Andarials and switching some things up. Before we get started, go and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I come out with a new video. Anyway, let's hop right into it and let's start out with the talents. So my talent points are going to be a little bit different because I do have the Harlequin Crest. You need to move one point and I'll show you where that is. First things first, Heartseeker. Main bread and butter of the build. It's amazing. This has got a high lucky hit chance. This is helping us out. When Heartseeker critically strikes, you gain attack speed for four seconds. Double the amount of the enemy is vulnerable. We always have them vulnerable. So this is amazing. Primary Heartseeker ricochets in an additional enemy, dealing more damage. So this is just giving us more chances to prop. Down here in the core tree, we are taking three points into Sturdy because close damage reduction is amazing. Three points into Stutter Step because I love movement speed. I have one point in Siphoning Strikes. This is the point you can move from Siphoning Strikes down to Shadow Step if you do not have the Holocron Crest. Then you'll be good to go. You'll have all the skills that you need for the way that I have this set up. And it'll be incredible. So, we're going to grab Weapon Mastery. Just dealing more damage based on what weapon you have is amazing. We love that. You're going to have Caltrips. This is going to give us a multiplicative damage for each second as they stand into things. And when we look at the gear, you'll see as your Caltrip duration increases, the amount of damage they take increases because it scales that way. It's really cool. Disciplined Caltrips. They take... You have a increased critical strike chance, double against vulnerable enemies. Again, they're always vulnerable. Methodical Caltrops, if you want that, if you want the chill, you can do that, whatever works for you. Then we are going to get three points in a concussive. When you knock back or knock down an enemy, you gain increased critical strike chance. We're gonna be doing this all the time. One point in the trick attacks. When you critically strike a dazed enemy, they are knocked down. Great synergy, we're always dazing. One point into dash, because dash is amazing. And then enemies hit by dash take increased critical strike damage for five seconds. We're just going to be dash around like mad anyway. It's going to be great. So down here in the Sutter Puge, we're going to grab Agile. This can be stacked. Woody Joe did a great video on how we can get basically 100% dodge chance. This is amazing. Look into it. It's pretty cool. We're going to put one point into smoke grenades. Enemies affected by smoke grenades take increased damage from us and then we have lucky hit chance to reduce the cooldown so we're going to be using smoke grenades all the time one point into poison trap one point in enhanced poison trap this is to proc some of the things in our paragon board and to cc it's great three points into exploit damage to injured and healthy enemies amazing three points into malice increased damage of vulnerable enemies again they're always vulnerable so this is going to be great dark shroud this is our biggest Defensive thing. The higher you go, the more damage reduction you get per stack. It's amazing. We don't even have this on our bar. I'll show you how we're propping this later. But they have a 14% chance not to be consumed, which is amazing. You get increased movement speed per Dark Shroud. So this is one way you can do it. Or if your gear's not up to par yet and you still need a little more crit chance, you can go ahead and grab Countering Dark Shroud, whichever works for you. I prefer the movement speed. My gear's pretty decent, so I can't complain too much. Down here in the imbuement section, we're just picking up three points in Fridge and Finesse because we deal multiplicative increased damage to chilled enemies and frozen enemies. It's amazing when we stagger bosses, their health just deletes. This is why this is the best thing for us to have on our neck pieces. I still don't have one. I've been farming forever, but one day, one day. So down here in the ultimate skill, you can see we do not have any of the ultimates. Three points into Trap Mastery. When a trap activates, you gain increased critical strike damage against vulnerable and crowd control enemies. As you saw earlier, we have it set up where when it activates, it crowd controls. One point into Adrenaline Rush. This does us no good except to get us down to haste, which is going to give us movement speed. We're never below 50% max energy, so we never get the increased attack speed. Last but not least, Victimize. This is what makes the build work. Dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has a 50% chance to cause an explosion, dealing 394% of the original damage to them and surrounding enemies. It is increased by 120% of your vulnerable damage bonus. I have 1,614 vulnerable damage. This is 
a lot. This is incredible. This is a lot of damage just popping off, right? It's great. So let's go ahead and talk about the Paragon board. Before we get started on the Paragon board, first thing I want to tell you, do not forget, do not cookie cutter the Paragon board. A lot of times you might need something else that's not there, right? So the biggest thing is you activate the glyphs and you get things that you need because you may need a little more resistances. You may need a little more HP. You may need a little more armor. For example, this one gives us damage and dexterity. But if you went over here, it gives you armor and dexterity. You know, if you're not quite armor capped, but you can get it here, there you go. Here's some more armor. Here's some more armor. Here's some more strength, right? Here's some more armor. Make sure you're paying attention to what you need in your Paragon board and don't always blindly follow something else. So first thing we got here, I have control on this first one. Increased damage to slowed, chilled, or frozen enemies. It's amazing. We slow, chill, and freeze everybody. It's great. Um, also increased damage to crowd control enemies. We always crowd control. It's amazing. So first one we roll up to here is going to be the exploit weakness because... Whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take increased damage for you six seconds, up to 25%. This is all the time, so we love this. The glyph we're using here is Ranger, super easy to activate here. Also, don't forget, you know, more vulnerable damage, more vulnerable damage. If you need more healing, if you need more healing, if you need more in intelligence, right? Just make sure you're paying attention to what you need. Over here. More damage to injured enemies, right? Make sure you're paying attention to these blue ones. Need more armor? Here's more armor, right? So there's that. Then we are going to move up into the Deadly Ambush, which is awesome. Love this one. Come over here. Again, poison resistance, poison resistance. Make sure you're paying attention because if you need more res, there you go. There's more res. So we're going to grab this. Increase critical strike damage to enemies affected by trap skills. We're using poison trap. Also, Caltrip counts as a trap. Don't forget that. Um, Glyph, we are using exploit here because increased damage of vulnerable targets, which is amazing. This is also instant vulnerability when we first hit them. So this is just popping off immediately. Then we are going to go over here into the cheap shot note, which is awesome. Love this one. Increased damage for each nearby enemy that is crowd control up to 25%. Um, when your trap knocks them down or when they're all slowed or when they're all dazed, those are all crowd control. So this is all the time. Again, don't forget, here's some armor, here's some armor. Damage reduction from slowed enemies. We slow them all, all the time, right? Then over here, we got chip. Physical damage increased take from you by 1% up to 10% for 15 seconds. Awesome. We're just dealing increased physical damage. That's all we're doing. Then, you're going to pop down over here back to the second board we went to, as you can see. It's going to move over into the Lirana's Instinct board. We're not going to get it, but this is how we're going to have it set up. We are going to be grabbing Ambush here. Easy to activate in this board. Moving on up to the next board. Increased damage to enemies affected by our trap skills, which all the time because we have caltrips and stuff, right? Again, make sure you're paying attention to some of the defenses you need. Move your skills around the way you need it. Got more poison res. See, I came down to grab this because I needed that. You can move points around. You know, if you didn't need that, maybe you come down here and get this attack speed. Make sure you're paying attention to what you need. And you can min-max from there. Then we're moving on up. We're going to be going into the no witness board. We're not grabbing no witness. We're just using this as a quick beeline to grab this glyph socket for pride. Increase physical damage to healthy and injured enemies which is going to be basically all the time, right? And then training is an amazing, amazing, amazing note. 18% life is a ton. Do not sleep on this one. 18% life is an absolute godsend, all right? So that is the Paragon board for the Heartseeker Road, right? Don't forget, I want to remind you one more time, don't cookie cutter these. Get your glyphs activated and get the things you need for your build as you're min-maxing. You can move stuff around as you need to, but do not forget, it's not about following everybody and what they're doing. All right, so the gear. I have the Holocron Quest. If you do not have the crest, get a helmet that's got similar stats. You know, you want main stat, max life, cooldown maybe. And then you want to use the basic attacks, reduce the amount of damage you take by 20% for X seconds. That's what you want to use. That's what this replaces. 
on your chest. I mean, obviously it doesn't matter where you get all of your imprints, but you need plus to Dark Shroud. I have Dex and Max Life here. If you have enough life, I'd put the armor roll here. I'm not quite armor capped. I need to do a little more min-maxing. See, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, so just move things around as you need to. Dodge chance, lucky hit chance. If you need more resistances, this is a good spot to pick it up, but that's what I got on that chest piece. As you can see, some of my stuff is eight. My Harlequin Quest is 12. Um, on your gloves, you want attack speed, lucky hit chance, this is a good spot to get crit instead of dex as well. You want to roll vulnerable damage because this is one of the spots you can. And then you want to get one of the lucky hits to freeze or stun. On your pants, you want to make sure you get, you know, dex, life. Biggest thing here, heart seeker levels. As many of those as you can get. I would re-roll until you get at least one masterwork on it. But I wouldn't go too deep on it. But that's where you're at there chance to freeze as you can see i picked up some lightning resistance here because my resistances were a little slacking on your boots armor max life move speed if you have enough of any of those things move speed decks armor you know just move it around how you need it just make sure your defense cap on your weapons you want dex max life vulnerable damage and then you want to roll heart seeker projectiles cast twice you want to try to get at least a 59% roll on this and then hit it once with a masterwork. Reroll it until you hit the masterwork. I'm not going to get 100% on this one, but well, I guess I will if I get lucky if I masterwork with the 12, but I've accepted that because I'm still looking for a better one, right? And then you want to roll vulnerable damage on that one. Weapon number two, vulnerable damage, max life dex. You want to roll couch of size on one of these, vulnerable damage. You want to roll couch of duration and vulnerable damage on the other one i will say if you are better at keeping them in the caltrops you can roll caltrop duration on both of these and you can get your damage up a lot but i'm not good at doing that so i don't even try then you are going to put on your rings here attack speed crit chance like you hit chance both of them should look like that it's amazing um i don't know i love it all right so agility cooldown on both of these. This is going to make it, well, I have shadow step cooldown on this one, but agility cooldown on both of these. It's going to make it where both of these skills are up quicker, dash and shadow step. Um, pack speed, lucky a chance, crit chance. Like I said, these are amazing stats. Um, vulnerable damage on both of those as well. And then on your neck, attack speed, critical hit chance, lucky hit chance. I have total armor because I needed it, but you can move that around as you need it. And then vulnerable damage here. So let's talk about the aspects. Umbrus Armor gives your marksman skills a chance to give you a Dark Shroud. That's why Dark Shroud is not on our bar. It's amazing. Damaging an enemy has a 20% chance of dazed them. You deal increased damage to dazed enemies. Concussive strikes. Amazing. Frostbitten. Enemies hit by your grenade skills. Well, hmm. Like smoke grenades, grenade skill. Enemies hit by your grenade skills have... Uh, chance equal to your critical strike chance to be frozen. You deal increased damage to frozen or stunned enemies. We're going to be freezing and stunning a lot. Then we have shared misery. I love this one. Whenever you hit a crowd control enemy, there's a 50% chance for your crowd control effect to spread to another unaffected enemy. This just makes it super easy for us to keep our crowd control effects spread apart. You'll see in the gameplay here in a second how great that is. Damaging enemy with a basic skill. We love Moonrise Aspect. This is just going to give us more damage on our Heart Seeker. It's going to scale our attack speed. It's going to make our Victimize hit harder. It's just all around the best thing we have. That's why it's on our two-hander. We have... I love this one. So you have a, a choice here. You can put the Lucky Hit Chance to make the enemy vulnerable on your ring. Or you can get... You can go down an Aspect and do the vampiric aspect. I love a cursed touch. I love this one. This one makes me happy because you always have vulnerable. You never have to worry about it because of how hard our lucky hit chance is. You always have it. I recommend using this for ease of play. Then we have retribution. Distant enemies have a chance to be stunned when they hit you. You deal increased damage to stun or knock down enemies. We stun and knock down all the time. So this is always going. We have skills still up to 20% extra damage based on your available primary resource. We don't spend resource. It's always capped, so it's always good. 
basic skills deal third or uh, have thirty percent increased attack speed. Uh, amazing. We want that all the time. And then we want the adaptability aspect here to give us more damage on our basic skills. We have that on the amulet because it's second best to Moonrise and is just going to be giving us a flat increased damage. All right, so I'm going to show you guys an 89 real quick. I normally do 99, but I'm not feeling actually having to think. So I'm going to show you how this works. If you have an elixir of advantage, attack speed and lucky hit, Pop it and go in here. So, on an 89, I will likely not have to push anything except Heartseeker because of how this build works. It's amazing. Let me show you exactly what we're doing and we'll roll through it. And it is just mm, chef's kiss if it ever loads. But we'll see. Da -da -da -dum -da -da -dum. All right. So, we're basically elite hunting, or, you know, if you're me, you're just stutter stepping and shooting everything. It doesn't matter. Um, the big thing here is you want to make sure you are keeping everything going. Um, when you have an elite or something, go ahead and throw a smoke grenade on them. And you will literally just fly through these, right? Like, yeah, I went over and hit a dead end. Cool. So now we're just going to keep rolling back this way. You don't have to kill everything. Like, you can elite hunt with this if you would like. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can set this up where you can use, um, concealment and literally just use it as an elite hunter or whatever you want to do. Right. Um, big thing here is to make sure you're taking out the guys who deal the reduced damage because they make it real tough to take out everybody else. Right. So as you're rolling through, make sure when you got an elite, just hit it with a smoke grenade, keep rolling through, keep rolling through. And this is the gameplay, right? Um, if you can stay away from them, stay away from them. If there's a big pack, take the big pack, right? But otherwise, just bonk the elites um, and do what you do, right? Like, it's super easy, right? Like, and your damage is super consistent and super chill and super easy. We're already, you know, halfway done. We've been in here a minute and 30 seconds or something, like... It's not ever, like, this one's super easy to play, guys. Um, your only source of getting out of CC, though, is your Shadow Step. So if you can avoid it, try not to use it as mobility as much. Um, I'm real guilty of doing that, so it's kind of why I'm trying to point that out. I'm real good about using it as a mobility skill instead of waiting and using it for something, uh, you know, that might save my life. Um, another thing too, if you're like me and you like to use the evade mechanic a lot, you can get the attacks reduce your evade cooldown on your boots and it makes it where you can just shoot, 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 barrel, do, 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 barrel. you know, like I enjoy doing that. That's kind of a thing I do. That's, one of the reasons I'm trying to put together Woody's uh, grenade build to see how it goes, especially with the changes we're getting on Tuesday, that's gonna be, it's gonna be nice, right? It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. So, we have already almost spawned the boss. Um, not even three minutes in yet, so we're just rolling on through. Um, ooh, that's a nice big pack. Oh look, we got the boss. So, when you are in here. You can do what you need to do. I would recommend making sure you go ahead and put down your cow drops. As the boss gets staggered, go ahead and make sure you have all of your debuffs on them. So they take as much damage as possible. And yeah, we're, we're good, right? You're just doing what you need to do, right? Easy money. Easy, 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 right? Got there, did it, no problems. Use this to get out there and farm your Stygian stones and farm all your neat iron. It's really good. Anyway, if you stuck around, I appreciate it. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.